This pack's coverage is powered by Alienware. Hey everyone, it's Andrew with Curse here. I've stopped by Never Alone and I'm with Matt. He's gonna actually tell me a little bit about the game and kind of the, the inspiration and the reason behind the game and why we're gonna be seeing this coming to Xbox One and to PS4 and Steam and Standalone coming November 4th. So can you tell me a little bit about Never Alone? I would be happy to. So Never Alone was, is produced in partnership with the Cook Inlet Tribal Council and Upper One Games. About two and a half years ago, Cook Inlet Tribal Council and Upper One Games approached our company, Eline Media, and asked us to make a game about their, their history and their culture of oral storytelling traditions. And from that point, we worked with their storytellers and elders and scholars, their museums. They opened up their archive of, of a wealth of stories. And we worked directly with them to produce the game Never Alone. The game is about a young girl, Nuna, and her Arctic fox who travels through a wide assortment of locations and environments in order to try to find the source of an ongoing blizzard that's plagued her village and prevented them from being able to hunt. And we're really presenting the game as a story told to you by an elder. Uh, there's an ongoing narrator that, that tells the story to you as you play through. What exactly, or what were you going for when you're playing with this art style? Because it looks a little familiar, but there are some definite uniqueness and tributes to it that are just kind of nice. What What is that all about with this game? So a lot of the inspiration for it certainly came from a number of other games, but much of it too came from actually visiting some of these locations. We took a number of trips up to Barrow, Alaska, and to Anchorage, and a number of other places, and just really uh, noticed how the light played very differently, and, and everything had a much softer feel. We worked very hard to try to get that that soft soft depth of field into the game, and and to really show uh, you know, a wide range of the different environments that, that were up there. We were absolutely astounded by the variety and the, the, the way that the light would change according to the time of day, when the aurora would come out and absolutely light up the sky. It's such a beautiful environment. We worked very, very hard to try to represent that in the game as well. Well, fantastic. I'm actually looking very forward to the game. It's really caught my eye. It's, I'm definitely gonna be picking up Never Alone coming on November 4th. Make sure you pick it up as well. It'll be across multiple platforms. Hey everyone, it's Andrew here. I'm actually with John right out of what you just saw was Slender the Arrival. Now Slender the Arrival is a new Slender game, which I bet everybody's really getting amped for. Can you tell me a little bit about what this installment is going to be like and what we can expect to see from it? Totally. So Slender the Arrival is done by Blue Isle Studios. Um, they worked in tandem very closely with Parsec Productions, which a lot of people are familiar with uh, the eight pages, that original free-to-play game that was online for a little while. That was kind of the experience that got people turned on to Slender. And so Blue Isle Studios guys went to the Parsec Production guys and said, hey, this is an awesome game. We want to make this into a full 3D experience. And so what they did was they released it as a PC standalone in March of last year. Then we brought it to Steam in October with some new content, and now we're bringing it to console, 360 PS3, with some fresh content as well. So we're going to be a total of nine levels, and it's going to go through the story of multiple personalities. So there's, there's Lauren, who's a real estate agent, trying to help her friend sell her mom's house after her mom passed away, and she shows up and the house is ransacked, and she's trying to figure out what exactly happened to her friend. Then there's crazy drawings on the walls, notes, different things that she's discovering. It's, it's all about discovering things and experiencing the game and kind of learning what happened to these individuals. And then you've got another character who comes up in these letters named CR, Carl Ross, who's an investigator, and he's trying to figure out exactly what's happening in the lives of multiple people. So the Matheson family is his main target, but from as offshoots of that, he starts to learn about Kate, and he starts to learn about Lauren, he starts to learn about these other people, and he starts delving a little bit more into their background. Apart from that, I actually just got a chance to play it myself. Yep. I did enjoy it. You know, it had its moments for me, you know. As, as Slender does, he has a couple surprises in there for everybody, you know? Yeah, he sneaks up. I no, mean, who, who would have thought? But when can we expect maybe a timeline of us uh, getting our, or the public getting their hands on this and really playing it and diving on in? Well, we're looking to have this out. Uh, we're having a news out about this just after PAX, so we're excited to get people ready for that. I don't want to commit too much, but we're hoping in the next like 30 to 60 days we can have it on the market. So that's what we're looking at right now. Well, if you're excited for the next Slender lineup title, you can get excited for it because it should be here soon. Hopefully, we don't know for sure, but they will give us a heads up in the coming week or so, or weeks, on when we can expect to see the title. Obviously, you guys are going to need to check it out if you played anything from the first one, so definitely go and do that. Well, you have to uh, rearrange the panels on this comic book, on the comic book pages, to change the outcome of the story and solve the puzzles. 